Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this series of uh, snippets with uh, some tips and tricks for your modeling of the final assignment in the course. Uh, I'm going to make quite a few short uh, video clips where I explain step by step what, what I do. And uh, the model I'm going to use is this one. This is the car key for my car. So I took a picture of it and I modeled it and eventually rendered it as well. Um, so this first episode, it's going to cover some basic setup before we get started how we work with mar marking menus, uh, some construction options, and also how we import uh, a picture or a sketch and use that as a background uh, for our modeling. So take a look at, let's take a look at the, the basic setup. I've just opened alias here. And I wanted to share with you the different options of marking menus that we have. Uh, marking menus are accessed by holding down shift and control and either of the mouse buttons. I'm using the modeling option for marking menus, which cover most of the commands that I need uh, to, to model. Uh, in 3D, and I prefer. I would urge you to to actually use the the marking menus compared to to flipping through the menus in the in the palette. So if we look at the options available, uh, we can look at at uh, the the preferences, marking menus, and you can see here. We have a bunch of different set of marking menus, one being the default, uh, one being the classic, which is the old style marking menu, one being the modeling marking menu, which I'm using here, and also subdiv marking menus. And you can also uh, alter these to fit your needs and save it. Uh, but for these videos, I'm going to be using the modeling marking menus. Also, I want to show you how I work with the palette. Uh, default, the palette is located like this, and then you get a bunch of different icons here. I find that rather complicated, so I use it the other. Let's close these again. So I orient it horizontally and actually hide the icons and just keep the headlines of the menus here. If I right click on any of these uh, headlines, I get all the commands in in clear text rather than just, just the icons. I prefer that, but um, for your sake, I'm gonna keep the icons visible like this throughout these videos. Uh, also, when working in Alias, you need to be aware of the construction options, which you find under preferences and construction options. Make sure you are using tolerances that are fine enough. And what is fine enough, well, that can be discussed. But in this case, we are going to, to work with a rather small piece. Uh, the car key is approximately 80 millimeters long and somewhat 40 millimeters wide or something like that. And uh, that can cause sometimes some problems with such a small piece. So we're actually going to, to work in a scale 10 to one. So any measurement on, on the car key is going to be 10 times as big in, in alias. Uh, 
with the construction options, you can see that the tolerances are are fine enough. We have a curve fit distance. Um, I'm using Katia B4 here, uh, and I recommend you do, do the same. Um, we can see a curve fit distance of 0 0.01 millimeter, it means that if two curves are uh, within this tolerance, uh, they are considered uh, identical. Also, gaps are defined as up to 0 0.01 millimeter. Any gap smaller than that is not considered a gap. Uh, but you don't really need to worry about that. Just, just check that you have CATIA V4 tolerances. Okay. Also, a little something about the grid spacing. Let's just check the distance between each grid space here. And we can do that by adding a locator measure distance. So I hit Alt and an intersection and hold down Alt and another intersection. And we can see that these grid squares are 100 millimeters. And uh, for our purpose, that's just fine. So we'll use that. So let's delete that locator uh, with the marking menu, of course, like so and see how we can import an image to use as a background. So I'm going to hit F5 to get into the top view, like so, and zoom out slightly. Uh, so what you do is that you go to File, Import, Import, sorry, uh, and Canvas. So if I hit Canvas, I can choose an image to use as my canvas image or canvas plane. And I have one here that I took with, with my mobile phone on, on my car key. So let's use that one and open it. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it's huge. You can see that uh, our car key is only going to be uh, eight centimeters or 80 millimeters long and the each square here is a hundred so we need to scale, <clears throat> scale this down considerably and I take an object which is my canvas plane like so and I go scale like any other object in, in AES really and I start scaling it down And we know that we want the total length of this key to be roughly uh, 80 millimeters or 800 millimeters in this case, since we are working in a scale of 10 to one. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Oh, we need to scale it down a bit more. Actually, I'm gonna move it down to that go close to the Arigo and see one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three down. We are getting closer, scaling down slightly more and bring it up. You want to think oh, one, two, three, oh, we need to scale it up slightly. There we have approximately the correct length. Also, we need to center it along this line. So I go move and move it sideways. I try to, to center it around this circle here. Now, when using a photograph like this, uh, the photo is usually distorted in its perspective. So you can't expect to have a perfect flat view 
top view of the geometry. So see this as a guideline rather than than uh, a final perfect result or anything like that. Uh, anyway, this geometry here is symmetrical around this line here. So I'm just going to model one side and then mirror it across. We're going to talk a lot about symmetric modeling uh, as we go along here. Uh, if we're happy with the positioning, I'm going to move it up a little bit, just like that. Uh, we can set the pivot point to Origo as well. Market menu, middle button, set pivot, and hold down Alt and click close to Origo, and there we go. Another neat feature with using canvas planes is that in the control panel, you could set the level of transparency because this can get rather annoying having this strong picture in the background all the time. And you could set the level of transparency in the control panel by sliding this bar right here, uh, canvases, and make it almost invisible or set the transparency at a level that you need. Also, we are going to create a new layer right now. Uh, so new layer and name that canvas. We pick our canvas plane and assign that to this layer. This way you can turn it off and on as you go along with your modeling. And that concludes this first episode. Thank you for listening, everyone.